Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make blocks, crops, and the seeds associated to those items. So first of all, uh, I'm going to go back into crops.java, uh, just called block init. And uh, what this is going to be uh, is this is going to be a separate file, and it's going to initiate that file on this function. So here. All right. And then I will put that with in it here. I'll fix this package. So basically what we'll do is we'll do the same thing as item in it and just put that into block in it. And then after that, we will go here to crops.java and fix this. And we need to import that file that we just created. So now all the errors are gone. So just like in item in it.java, we added iron essence. So outside of in it, uh, just like in item in it, in block in it, add a line here, call it public static final, and we will call this iron plant. And then we'll name that that. And then we will do the same thing. Uh, we will put it all in one line and we'll put it as registry register and block new identifier crops which is the mod ID and then the name of the block And then we will register all of the settings of that block in one line here as well. So I will do iron plant. And of course, we don't have that separate file yet, but we will add it shortly. So inside of these settings, we'll add fabric block settings and of material. And then we'll make it material plant. And we'll add no collision, ticks randomly, strength. So what it takes is uh, hardness as a float and resistance as a float. But because it's a plant, we'll just make it zero for now. And then we'll add sounds. And then block sound group. And we'll call this a crop. And we will add the non opaque feature. So now we got to do imports. So what we'll do is we'll fix this. We need to create the class iron plant. So we'll go ahead and create that class. But it automatically puts it into the same folder as your block in it. So we'll actually just move this into a separate place. Crops, new folder and we'll make a blocks folder. Then we'll drag that over. Now that will error because we need to fix the package name. So change package declaration. That will fix that. Now we need to re-register this import. There we go. So now that works. Registry. And again, pick the right registry. So I've picked net.minecraft.util.registry. Then from here, we need to create a constructor inside of iron plant. And then from here, we need to extend crop block and import crop block. So when we added the constructor here, it automatically put in a method with parameters. Now these parameters are wrong. So we'll take out non-opaque and we'll add new parameters here. So instead, what I'll do is I'll do block setting builder. And now instead, we can use a super class to call these parameters. Now this whole function will look at this whole line instead for its settings. We'll import block. OK, and it didn't like that fabric block settings. Uh, so that is the wrong import. It's this one here. 
So it's NetFabric MC API Object Builder version one block. Now that all those errors are resolved, let's clean up some of this code a little bit before we move on. We have some uh, common naming conventions here that we've stuck to. It's typically a word separated by an underscore separated by another word. So what I'll do here um, is I'll separate these two words here in item group. This will cause an error because we're registering this item inside of that creative tab. So once we fix that, then that is resolved. Next, what we'll do is we'll add this into the JSON. Then we'll change all of the name formatting for the creative tab menu. I will add in this item group as item group dot crops dot item underscore group. And then I'll just call this crops. Now this will change the creative tab menu name to crops. Okay, so because we added a new block to the game, we'll also have to change how the uh, name shows up in the game. So in order to do that, we'll have to do the same thing that we did with item crop iron and append a tooltip to the item. So I'll go ahead and copy that. And I'll paste that into there. And then I will import all of these items here. Okay, so, and then from here, we'll have to add block.crops.iron underscore plant. Okay, so now that's changed in there. Now we have to go ahead and add this into the JSON file. And then we'll add a comma. And then we'll add in blocks.crops.iron underscore plant. And then we'll call this just something arbitrary. Creates the iron plant, for example. So now that we've added the crop block to the game, now we'll actually have to register the actual seed. So once the seed is registered, then we can add a function to it later on to make it so that the crops grow from the actual seed item itself. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we'll just do a public static final and we'll call this item seed iron. Then we'll call this iron seed. Now to save some time, we could just copy this whole line because it's basically the same thing and then do some changes in order for it to fit our needs. So from here, what we'll do is we'll call this registry dot register registry item. This identifier will stay the same crops ID, the mod ID. We'll rename this iron essence to iron seeds. And then this will be new item seed iron. And then inside of here, we'll just create a new parenthesis. We'll call block in it dot iron plant and then we'll register this as a new item settings and then we'll close off that parenthesis and there we go now we have to create the constructor and create the class so we'll create an item seed iron and just like last time that will create an item so what we'll do is we'll actually just move this over into items fix this package naming go back into here and import that and it looks like we have a few problems here. And so we need to add the settings into the class here. What we'll do now is we'll extend block item and we'll import that. This will add a constructor. There's parameters here. So we'll do block, we'll call this crop and settings. And like last time, we'll just call this builder. So it is very similar to the iron plant and how we set it up with the super. So what we'll do is we'll go back here and just change this to crop and builder. Next, what we'll do is we will add the append tooltip once again, just like last time. We'll just copy this right into here and then do all of the import. And now we'll change this to item dot crops dot iron underscore seeds line one. So from here, I'll add these two. Item.crops.iron underscore seeds, and we'll call those iron seeds. And then we'll add a little tooltip underneath that with just some information on what to do. So plant on farmland to grow iron plants. All right, so it looks like that worked. Now we just need to add a texture, Let's see if it actually plants. All right. Okay, so now I'm gonna add textures to this. So what I'll do is I'll create 
folder in resources, assets, crops, textures, and we want blocks. So we'll create a new folder, call this block. Now we're gonna have to add the stages for each plant, just like it is in vanilla Minecraft. There are eight stages. So I've gone ahead and prepared those, so I can just drag those into here. Basically what this looks like is, uh, you know, just a little plant growing. That's stage two, stage three, stage four, stage five, stage six, stage seven, stage eight. And so that's what it actually looks like while growing. Okay, so now that we've gotten that, now we need to add the JSON to tell what these textures to do during each growth step. That will be in assets, crops, models, and block. Create a new folder, block. Make sure that's in the right place. And then I have modified the vanilla wheat JSON file and I called it something else. So first of all, I just called it base plant stage underscore zero. And I've copied the JSON format from wheat and I've added it into here. And I've set it up so that it's a cross section so that it will grow like a crop uh, as an X on the ground. And it requires this file in order for it to render that properly. So each stage, it will render each image file that we just loaded into textures into a cross shape for each stage. So stage, you know, zero, one, two, three, four, and so on. Now we'll need to add something called a block state so that all of these will render properly. So I'll put that under assets, crops, and I'll create a new folder called block states. Now, so far we have iron plant. So I've prepared iron plant here. So now what this does during each of the age steps for its growth process, it will load a model and the name of the model which will be found in here. And then once it loads that model, then it will load the texture for this PNG file, which will be the texture. So that would be here. Okay, and one last thing is we need to add the iron seeds. So I'll add that into assets, crops, models, item. And so then this will load the iron seeds PNG. I have a PNG prepared for that. So that will go into textures, item, And that is what that looks like. All right, so those two items have textures now. Now, one last thing we need to fix is this visual glitch with the block renders. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so under the crops folder, I'll create a new folder and I'll just call this util. And then under here, what I'll do is I'll create a new Java file. I'll call this block renders. Okay, so first of all, we will need to define renders. So public static void define renders. And then we need to render the block. First thing we'll do is I'll do block render layer map instance put Block. I need to import that and add the arguments. So the arguments here will be block in it, and then this will be our iron plant that we added, and then this will be our render layer, and then we'll cut out around the image. So get cut out. Okay, so one last thing we got to do is we have to initialize this block renders function that we just created. So under crops, I'll create a new file. I'll call this crops client Java. All right, so crops client is going to implement only client side functions. So we'll do client mod initializer. And then we'll do public void on initialize client. 
And then from here, we'll call our block renders that we just created. And then the function that we also created there. Okay, and so one last thing we gotta do after this is we gotta make sure that this crops client is registered as an entry point. So we'll go into our fabric mod JSON and we'll add a new line into entry points here. So it looks like we're already loading crops here. What we'll do is we'll add another line, separating it by a comma. We'll call this client. And then what we'll do here is we'll just put in net whatever I can see. Crops, crops, client. All right, now let's test this out and see if that works. Excellent. And there you have it. So let's grow this from scratch here. Okay, so that black um, map around the image is gone now because it was cut out by that function that we wrote. Okay, so that's it for this video. Our next video will be on dynamically updating textures. And then once we're done that, we'll add loot tables and recipes to all of the blocks and items.